hi everyone and welcome back and let's get on to our full stack app development and in the couple of videos i was building over its clone and even recorded couple of videos now i want to take one step back and wanted to understand all different type of architecture in which we can build this application or any full stack clone application there are many different ideas okay like uh, even if you talk about and you wanted to start something then you will get different ideas to build with let's say uber eats that's a swiggy clone udemy clone or twitter clone these are different clone ideas which you can think of and can build something and what are these these are some kind of products which are already there right instagram clone one common thing uh, in all these clone application is the architecture because based on the resource based on your knowledge based on your learning you will try to build it somehow okay so here we can adopt different kind of architecture different kind of strategy to build these things i mean these all are like service blocks there will be a front end application mobile app web app desktop app and then you will have some services running giving you the data because in whatever the application you build one thing is common is the data sitting somewhere and the the layer which is user interaction layer ui which can be web app mobile app which you design in flutter react native or web app is in react swell kit or whatever the technology you've built in all these things the important idea is how you build it like because currently these days you have if you talk about the the stack you think of react right if we talk about the even the front end i can do the same thing in react i can do it build in angular i can build it in the next js using ssr right or svelte kit or maybe something else this is the front end i'm talking about and then there is a back end layer which we are going to build in different sets like i can choose node because my content mostly talks about node.js as a back end or building the microservices in node.js because in node.js you can build anything you want but it's not about choosing the technology it's all about understanding the requirement deciding how you are going to build the services because if you talk about the, the legacy architecture which we used to do earlier is let's say here is a front end layer and there is a back end and it used to be a monolith and front end will talk to back end there will be authentication everything is there it's like a monolith even the front end is also used to be a simple simple single app now there is also a concept of micro front end same as the microservices in the back end right but this is like two tier architecture where we have front end where we have back end you expose the rest interface i mean this is the most popular and also working till now rest interface you expose the apis front end will happily integrate with the apis you see the data user will do the login username password user will start seeing the data and based on the product either you are building udemy clone twitter based on the user role you will start seeing the data now in the back end what do you will have these are the apis apis will obviously going to integrate with some data layer let's call it as a database now if we talk about simple database there are different kind of database sql no sql graph database and all right so now things have changed this is a plain and simple architecture which i used to build six or seven years earlier simple application front end i used to choose angular backend interface simple rest api everything post into one app and then database let's say postgres mysql or mongodb right but the thing is when you when it comes to building a product where 
it's not mvp where you just wanted to show a demo to the client saying okay these are the different ui screen and it's getting data from the back end for the mvp and for small application this looks fine fantastic because it is giving you what you need for the client demos but when it comes to the actual product when you talk about the deployment and putting these services somewhere on heroku uh, aws and azure and when your services are going to be complex where your front end interfaces are going to be complex and different kind of user roles and all things increases then we start using microservices it's not necessary that we use microservices it's always better to isolate or decouple things which are totally independent because there may be a teams which wants to write code in python go some wants to write in node.js they can expose an interface because now front end people who is just a pure react developer who's writing a react app has nothing to do has nothing to worry about if it is written in java go python because it's a rest interface i will give him a swagger interface swagger spec and he will see he or she will see okay these are the get put post delete patch apis and this is how i'm going to fetch the data post login i need to pass the authorization token in the headers these all details you will put in the swagger interface right so it's like a two-tier architecture you are going to build it like this but when it comes to the uber it's clone app many things we are considering just to make it a product ready application what all things okay the tools the technologies right because we have a different interface one is the the user end user interface in the swiggy in the uber eats clone who is going to order another interface is the admin interface which restaurant owners will use and there is another power admin interface which the product owners will use right so this is a restaurant interface i will use this restaurant interface this is end user interface who is actually the buyer buyer of uh, food items this is the restaurant admin and this is super admin who can see over things who is like the, the builder of the product right now because here in the the use case of uber eats clone it's not like we are just going to use one monolith there are going to be many services the auth service order service product service checkout service and on those services we are going to build those them as a microservices and you always thought about okay why we build microservices there will be a total sometimes data coupling where we need to talk to other microservice to fetch the data right let's say i build a auth microservice this is cart microservice for me they should not talk to each other what will actually happen i mean we are just talking about the architecture patterns but in thousand different ways i mean many different ways you can design your application architecture let's say you have not even gateway let's say the proxy proxy sitting here every request will hit the proxy first before even talking to a particular microservice and this proxy is going to get the authentication if it says authentication is good we are i'm good with the authentication sent by the client from these different interface then only i will allow you to talk to a particular microservice right proxy is good then i will say yes now you can go and talk to cart microservice restaurant microservice or let's say search microservice where you can search all the restaurant food items based on the restaurant name city and all now what we did instead of first of all we try to see the use case and we try to decouple things so these microservices should be decoupled enough so that they do not need to do a lot of interactions with each other because this is a base basic principle we should create a decoupled services cart has only to only has a business to do with the cart search microservice has only to do with the search 
user will ask give you the query okay give me the restaurants of this area give me the food items of food menu of this particular restaurant vegan veg non veg this search microservice will give you it has nothing to do with the shopping cart or anything similarly there is auth microservice either you use auth or you use simple username password or the mobile number authentication it will validate and it will give you the authorization token which the clients can send in header to talk to a microservice now if you think about this is a simple architecture but it can be built in different ways using different technology sets this proxy which looks like gateway you can use the aws api gateway azure api gateway or just a simple nginx proxy or just a simple node.js microservice this can also be written in node.js which will just intercept okay the request has authorization header then i will talk to auth microservice all good let, let this user forward the request to the cart and talk to the cart microservice here we will just do some kind of a routing for that right so there are many tools and many technology sets we can use what i'm going to do through this uh, uber eats clone i want to make you guys familiar with many things first of all what we are doing is we are individually building these services and these services can have a mongodb can have a postgres and we are using nest.js to build these microservices and we are going to use first a rest interface then the another architecture in which we will use the same set of things but here it will be a graphql gateway And we will use Apollo Federation for that. So let's say GraphQL Gateway. It's like same as uh, the Gateway thing. You know, uh, when it comes to Gateway, Gateway has a lot of responsibility to deliver the rate limiting threshold. I mean, whatever you think of uh, validating the request, right? Allowing the request to intercept it and then validating the headers, all those sort of things you can do at the Gateway level and deciding. You can also do the routing okay this request will go to this particular service that particular service so we are going to build all these services in two different modes a rest interface mode and the graphql interface mode rest interface we will go with the easy first because that would be easy for the understanding of uh, all different audience we will build all these different rest services auth microservices and all and then it will be just a proxy gateway which will take your request forward to uh, these different services okay the front end technologies which we already discussed Svelte, kit next js somewhere react js for these different admin boards but it's a it's a mix of technology and mix of architectures now this is what we thought of a simple understanding of architecture but when we go into deep down how these services can talk to one another let's say I initiated, uh, I want to do a checkout and want to send a notification or user has cancelled a, cancelled a request, cancelled the order. How can we propagate that event? Because now it comes to event driven architecture, a lot of things will come into picture because now I need to talk about those things also. Let's talk about these. So currently let's say we are doing server based architecture serverless architecture okay now i mean these are the broad categories technologies can be anything server based architecture where we actually use 24 7 running server running instance or a container and your application might be running on ec2 i mean on different platform either ec2 aws or ECS container, AWS, or Kubernetes, right? Using the ports or the serverless architecture, which is also quite quite popular. And you say that there is no like I wanted to save some money, and there are pros and cons of everything. Obviously, your application is not running. Some services sometimes got ideal, and you wanted to save some money. Then you heard of this thing, Lambda we can build these backend services as a lambda so whenever the request comes they will they will just uh, heat up and start responding to your request okay we can use the whole 
serverless architecture provided by AWS and maybe Azure because there is Azure function, AWS function. It's a Lambda based technology stack which we can use. If you wanted to build your application somewhat faster, then I think there is a AWS, AppSync, and all these technologies also you can use, which can give you a lot of things handy. Right? So it's all about the tool set, what tool set we are choosing. Let's say I just wanted to go ahead with the server based technology. And for MVP, I wanted to use Heroku. Heroku is a deployment platform like you might have heard about Netlify. Netlify versus that is used to deploy the front end applications and even the SSR application, Next.js or 12 Kit app and all. And Heroku can also be used to de uh, deploy and render the front end and back end apps. We can also use the back end apps to deploy on these platform Heroku or DigitalOcean, whatever you wanted to choose. It's all about how we are able to and how we able to integrate uh, our deployment platform with these Heroku, AWS, Azure and all. So what actually happens? You use the tool set like GitHub, GitLab, and then you might have heard about CI CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. Through this, let's say I just build a simple authentication service. What I will do is, I will write code, put all those things in the environment variables, which I can fetch at runtime, and then I will deploy to the platform. Let's say we choose Heroku, right? Heroku will expose me REST interface once my application is deployed, right? So that is for MVP because I don't want it to go rocket. I started using Lambda serverless and all. First, let's go with MVP where we are going to deploy the backend interface uh, on Heroku. Same as the front end React, 12 Kit, or Next.js also can be deployed on Heroku or uh, Netlify or WhatsApp. Okay. Now, choosing the architecture that is totally different thing how we go ahead, REST or uh, the GraphQL interface. Now, whatever the architecture we choose, either REST or GraphQL, both can be served through server or server based, server less based technology. Even in future, we are going to introduce the event driven architecture. So, here architecture types. So, first we talked about, let's say, what kind of setup we are going to use, serverless or server based. Let's say server based. Then, what type of interface we are going to use rest or graphql let's say rest these two things are finalized okay we are going to use server based which is 24 7 up and interface we are using rest from all the services either we use auth service login auth service card service all the all the services will expose rest based interface and deployment platform let's say we choose Heroku yes then architecture types this is the next thing now we can choose about different different set type of architecture let's say a simple two-tier architecture what what is two-tier architecture your front and back end every service even we don't have a, this proxy gateway your every service is going banana and talking to directly talking to required service. Let's say I'm on the restaurant admin. I will try to go to the restaurant search. I will directly talk to this. Now these services because you also need to check authentication and authorization. Either they and go to talk to authentication service by checking okay user is authorized with this token or not. Right whatever the new service you write even you can't put aggregate aggregate logic for all these services what you are giving freedom is let's say i build a three different front end applications i'm giving them freedom okay you can go and talk to any back end service this is plain and simple two tier architecture we don't have anything you will have the exposed api interface from this or this and this and your front end will talk to okay, http blah blah dot com api v1 
and these services will talk. We just need to make sure some privacy, I mean some privacy of data that without login users should not be able to access the data. That is minimal thing, right? That we should always do otherwise there is no data security. Obviously these are the private APIs. There will be some public APIs which uh, a user can access even without login like okay I wanted to just search the number of restaurants available in this area or the food menu of a particular restaurant. This is the kind of called two tier architecture but I kind of don't, don't like it. We are exposing all the backend interface, their types. I always put a proxy there. For me this become kind of a three tier architecture. And here I put this microservice because in most of the technologies this always a part of an API gateway authorizing the request. So you will talk to the API gateway, API gateway will do lot of things, the routing, validating the request, I mean you are authenticated user but when you are look when you are putting a order into the cart I need to make sure that you are logged in. So I need to know your session details, you, you should have a current uh, session, otherwise I cannot allow you to put an order. This is auth service, which may be a part of gateway interface and then gateway knows okay where to go from here based on the your request. This is kind of a proxy pattern like reverse proxy and forward proxy, it's like what Nginx setup we are doing. 3 tier architecture now there can be a because these are microservices they will have their own database layers obviously two services won't be talking to same database these are decoupled enough that they have their own database layers and we don't care what database they use because we care about the data they are returning in JSON format we don't care how they are storing and how they are managing or persisting the data so that is gateway architecture or 3 tier architecture but it's also uh, again server based. Then okay this is the evolution now we try to evolve it this is fine but in these real time systems we always need to build some kind of an event driven system. Event driven system means when you say you are putting an order from the Swiggy and let's say they are allowing you an option in one part in one minute you can cancel your order then what all things should happen if you cancel the order right because you already made a payment uh, you already uh, even the item has been assigned to a vendor vendor might have uh, started preparing but there is a one minute threshold let's say i cancelled my order what all things should happen i need to get my money back right so in those things we will go with event driven architecture first of all microservices are fine we don't need to touch them they are doing good but in event driven uh, architecture what else we will do is our services now already decoupled and they should start emitting the events which the subscriber service would listen and act these all are asynchronous operation first of all all these are synchronous operations restaurant admin wants to see his, his menu of his own restaurant I need to give the response right away back through the rest interface he will uh, front end will hit the HTTP get give me all my restaurant and through the restaurant service I will give the response back HTTP 200 you get the response but when I, when there is an event which can happen over the time where we don't need a response right away right let's say I cancel the order I won't get the money back just uh, in few seconds just right away right it's a synchronous event which can happen over the time but it must happen let's say I cancel my order what will happen this car or uh, order service will see a cancellation event let's say there is another service we'll change it to order service order microservice will send an event it will emit an event order cancelled and these are going to happen in the past because you have cancelled the order now I need to act on to these set of events 
and this order cancelled event will be sent to message broker or whatever the technology you can use you can use kafka sqs sns or maybe a kinesis stream wherever you want to send it because there would be a listener who are going to act on the order cancelled and then they will grab okay this is the event and this event is saying is the user id is this he cancelled this order id let's let's act on it and do the the further things right then these serverless event driven architecture both are actually paired up and they love each other when it comes to serverless serverless architecture can adopt event driven architecture very nicely because if you talk about aws you write these services as a lambda in serverless this lambda can emit a event through sns and there is another lambda who another lambda listening all these kind of events they can act on to these events and can do a number of things this is called event driven architecture because event will happen and that derives change in the system state okay these are event driven and these are asynchronous events simple notification events let's say the order has been created you will send a notification to the user and the vendor you will send a lot of notifications simple notification delivery system is also event driven because that is going to happen asynchronous even when the order is placed and you get the tracking how those tracking are happening some third party system we might be using to track the 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 vehicle which is coming to your doorstep but that is also doing some kind of a push notifications and sending the coordinate over the time okay this is my current location and all so that is also happening through the push notifications to the client device either a laptop or either a mobile those are also some kind of events being thrown to the currently logged in user session okay so this is just a quick recap because we have already started working on the front end interface but this is what we are going to use initially rest based interface maybe we'll write a gateway where we have authentication service which will authorize each and every request and then we will write these rest interfaces of different services because when when i move this to the graphql either you use rest or graphql based interface if i if i'm writing rest tomorrow i can change them to the graphql interface by not changing the rest interface and today if i'm using rest based interface same interface i can deploy as a lambda also because that is the evolution earlier the lambda based development was little hectic now it is very easy you can deploy the simple nest js application as a lambda and it it becomes serverless because it's not up and running 24/7 when the restaurant admin is saying okay give me the restaurant uh, menu then only that lambda will be invoked and give you the data from database so this is the baseline we'll start with this and then we will evolve we keep changing things from rest to graphql from just a three tier architecture to the serverless based architecture where we are going to use aws lambda nestjs sqs sns and all those fancy things okay so let's get started <laughs>